welcome to this second video lecture. A little bit more of an advanced case, but we will follow the same steps. For some overview, I'll show you the coronal reformat of the late arterial phase first. Clear dilatation of the bile ducts, both intrahepatic and extrahepatic. Dilatation of the main pancreatic duct, and both can be followed up to an obstruction lesion in the head of the pancreas next to the superior mesenteric vein. For assessing the tumor, we will go on with the axial reformat of the late arterial phase. So again, dilatation of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts, dilatation of the main pancreatic duct with atrophy of the pancreatic tissue in the body and tail of the pancreas and both dilated ducts can be followed up to this obstructing lesion in the head of the pancreas. Assessing the morphology of the lesion compared to the normal pancreatic head, it is both cystic in the center and solid in the rim and the solid part is hypovascular compared to the normal enhancing pancreatic tissue. So this is a slightly less typical presentation of pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Most are completely solid and hypovascular. And the cystic part could be due to an adenocarcinoma originating from an IPMN or an adenosquamous carcinoma. Next step would be measuring the size of the lesion, 27 millimeters in this case. And of course, we will have to assess the vascular involvement, starting off with the celiac trunk. No involvement, common hepatic artery, no involvement, SMA, no involvement. But in this case, we can see that there is a relation to relevant venous structures, both the superior mesenteric vein and also the portal vein. Looking at the amount of involvement over here, just over 90 degrees involvement of the superior mesenteric vein, and one might want to look in other directions or make a curved NPR to confirm this involvement. Just over 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. Vascular anatomy, normal. No stenosis of the SMA, no stenosis of the celiac trunk. Next to the vascular involvement, there is invasion of the peripancreatic fat on the lateral aspect of the pancreatic head towards the duodenum, encasing the gastroduodenal artery, so probably invasion of the duodenum at this point, but no invasion of other organs. So looking at the T stage, this is a T2 tumor based on the size, 27 millimeters, contact with the SMV over 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So depending on the resectability criteria that are used in your institution, this would either be a resectable lesion or a borderline resectable lesion, but no signs of clear invasion. So still remaining a T2 tumor and no T4 tumor. Some lymph nodes are seen, but all are small, less than 10 millimeters in short axis. So no clear signs of lymph node metastasis. Going on with the portal venous phase, showing no signs of liver metastasis. So in conclusion, we have a 27 millimeter mass in the head of the pancreas, obstructing both the bile duct and main pancreatic duct. A slightly atypical morphology of the lesion, showing both cystic and solid components. There is a 90 to 180 degrees relation to the superior mesenteric vein and less than 90 degrees relation to the portal vein. So depending on the resectability criteria in your institution, this would either be a borderline resectable or resectable lesion. In our institution, this lesion was resected, confirming a T2 lesion, but less than one millimeter margin to the SMV, the resection being a R1 resection.